Hello everybody, my name is Dalton Nelson, and Happy New Year! Uh, there might be some talking in the background, but that's okay, I guess, because family is over and everything, so I'll try to make this as professional as possible. But do know that there probably will be some background noise in this video. But today I'd like to show you my new project I've worked on and completed. I have created this application here. This is a beer cap logger using WPF for C Sharp. So let's explain what this is and why I went about creating this. So beer cap logger is a logging software meant to log your beer cap collection. Why I set upon making this application was that I wanted to learn how to develop for WPF forms for a C Sharp UI as well as understanding things like MVVM framework and open file dialogues and things like that. So I wanted to create my own standalone application here using uh, WPF uh, C Sharp as like a base. So what this project is, is as I said, it is a logging software. It is meant to log your connection, I mean your collection of beer caps. So how I went about uh, developing this was I wanted to create mechanics centered around that sort of collecting. And I wanted to have a very base, simple level uh, application to work on. So for this project, I broke things down into a couple of key sections. First, this beer cap data structure here. I wanted to lay out things like primary colors, secondary colors, brands, images, uh, cap messages, dates, ac date, ac date acquisitions, and of course cap quality, since that would be something important in your cap collection. I also laid out a couple of screens in advance, like you can see here, my start screen, my add user form, what I thought my data table would look like, and what I thought the add new cap window would look like, things like that. I also laid out who was working on this project and what would be used. So as you can see here, we are using Visual Studio as our IDE, Calibre and Micro as our, MB, as our MBBM framework. I used GIMP for any asset creation in terms of image creation or just general 2D maintenance. And finally, I used version control GitHub in order to keep this project uh, managed and keep, to, keep it on the web and track my progress on it. You can actually find the GitHub project right here at, at github.com forward slash Dalton Nelson forward slash beer cap logger WPF project. And it's here where you can see all of my files, including my GIMP files, uh, any planning files I had created, which I don't think there was many for this. I kept my planning files more on um, Google Drive this time instead of on my own disk. And just general all the other files here. Finally, I laid out a target audience. So I wanted the ones to use this application. I initially planned this for 20 year old, 21 year old Americans, but I since have decreased that age to 18, I felt like 18 was a better fit. Just because it's it's a beer uh, centric application, I wanted adults really to use this application and no one younger. I also centered this around bottle cap enthusiasts and logging enthusiasts, people who like to log things, people who like to collect beer caps whenever they drink beer. And finally, I wanted to center this around industry buyers looking for logging software just to keep a professional edge around this application to make sure that I am developing this for something that would be used in the real world and that a company would want to have and want to present in the real world. So I initially started this project around December 6th. I was hoping to get this done around December 27th, which was four days ago, which would I which I believe would be the final commit. Let me just view my commits here. I be I meet all my base goals around. Let me see here. I'm sorry for any talking in the background, as I said before. Okay, so, okay, so right here you can see my final commit for my base goals anyway 
here five days ago. So December 26th. So I just, I was just early on my projected finish date. So as you can see, I spent my time quite well. These development updates never happened. I wanted to have like a development update each week, but I never really did that. So uh, just ignore these two dates here. But if, it, if we were in a real world uh, environment and I actually had to answer to like an, a, a, a company or a business, then these business, these dates would be like the business weekly updates. That's, that's what these would be. So now that we've kind of gone over just the planning and the general design document around this beer cap logging software, let's check out how it actually panned out here. So I'm going to go ahead and start my application. And by the way, if you would like to see the code and logic and files behind this, uh, behind this application, it can all be found in the GitHub project. If you go to the, uh, the base project here, it should be all under beer cap log WPF. And then here's my two projects here. And then the actual project is right here under beer cap log. That's where you're going to find most of the files that are pertinent to this project. This other project we'll get into later, this little smaller project I did. But let's get into this. So we're going to go ahead and start the application. And we're going to set, be sent here to our shell view. Here we can maximize this and resize it. Getting a little too small will hide the pick user and new create new profile buttons. But generally you can resize this window just as long as you don't make it so small that it's like cutting off the words there. But in terms of the elements I put in this title window, I put a logo that I custom made here, just kind of basing it off of like a wooden bar sign. I have two interactable elements. I have a pick user dropdown and a create new profile button. And then finally, I have my credit down at the bottom. So let's start from left to right here. First, we have a pick new user dropdown. If we click this, we can see the users that have been made thus far, as well as their latest log in time. So you can see here we have Will, William Gladdy and Betsy Klein, and they have each logged on, I believe, yes, it looks like today. Although Betsy is the one that has logged on the most recently. So of course we would use, uh, she would be the one at the very top of the dropdown here. We can also come over here to start here. If we wanted to create a new profile, say I click down here and I didn't see like me, for example, then I can come here and click start here. So let's go ahead and do that. And that'll take us to another form. Just like the form before, we can resize it. And users generally will have a couple of uh, properties attached to them. If we come over here to the, uh, I'm clicking the wrong thing. If I, come, if I come over here to the user model, you can see each user has an, let's go ahead and not hide the audios, the autos, but we can see that each user has an ID, a first name, a last name. They have a date of birth and they have a time last logged in, which is what we're using for that dropdown back in the previous screen. So, and there's a couple other things in here as well, but this is the stuff every user has, just kind of these five things right here. The ID itself is logged in the background. Everything else we have to kind of, the, the ID and the time last logged in are logged in the background rather, and everything else we have to fill out. So for the user, we can do something like, um, well, actually let's try and just, uh, let's, let's view the bottom first to see what we can do down here in terms of like buttons. So we have two buttons here. We have this button here, which if we hover over it, you can see this is the go back button. Naturally, if you click this, you'll be sent back to the shell view here. Meanwhile, add user will try and add the user via the form data that you enter in here. Now let's try and clicking that right now. We're gonna see we're gonna get an error for each of our fields here. Each user needs to have a first name a last name, and the user must be 18 years or older. So the form will check for that stuff. So let's go ahead and add, add some uh, valid data. Let's do um, uh, Nicole uh, Kidman. I don't know if that's how you actually spell her name, but let, that's just an example. And we're gonna say her date of birth is back in uh, 1964 of March 6th, right? That's 18 years old-ish, right? So we're gonna hit add user. 
And now it'll take us back to this form. And now if we check our pick user dropdown, we're gonna see Noel, Kid Noel Kidman, Nicole Kidman is up at the top. Her time last logged in was, uh, was logged as we had created her. So she's up here. We can even see that the time that I have here is also displayed here. So let's go ahead and click her. And as you can see, we're going to be taken to her collection form. I call this the user, I call this the, um, the user data view form. Here we can see all of the, uh, caps that Nicole had logged before. And right now she doesn't have any because we should, she just created her profile. So she'll have to do a couple things here. First, we're going to see Coming, going from the top down, and we'll we'll focus more on this body later as we add caps. But up at the top, we're going to see we have Nicole Kidman's caps. So the form will fill out her name for her. We have three buttons here in this toolbar. And if we hover over them, we have the Add New Cap button, the Remove Selected Cap button, and the Delete User Profile button. Let's start with the Add New Cap here. So that'll take you to this form here, where we can fill out more stuff. We have a brand, which will go a little bit deeper into brands. We have a quality, which I just created five qualities here of what I thought might be the most relevant. So we can do that. We can select the date acquired, and we can also select an under cap message. Right now, if we select create cap, which will try and create the cap using our, um, our, our form data, then it, it should all be valid and go on through. But it just it does check for things like if the user has selected a brand, if the user has, or well, I think the brand, the only thing it'll really actively check, and by the way, there's a go back button here. So if we wanted to go back to Nicole's collection, we could. But the only thing it really checks is if the user tries to add a cap and they try to set the date acquired to sometime in the future, the form doesn't allow that. So we have to make sure that it's somewhere within either today or before today. So we're going to do like December 10th of this year. And we're going to leave everything else as is. And we're going to hit create cap. And as you can see, it'll take us back to our, our collection form. And here's our cap. It has an ID. It has an image associated with it, which comes from the brand data structure, as well as the brand's name and the brand's primary color and secondary color. Again, that, these colors are tied to the brand and we'll get into that. We have the quality, we have the date acquired, which was today, we're no December 10th. And then finally, for the undercap message, we didn't put anything in there. So that'll come up as none. So that's pretty cool. So we're gonna go ahead and add another cap. And this time we're gonna look at a little bit deeper into the brand structures here. Cause as you can see, I've already created a couple brands uh, already. But if we wanted to create another one, there's this plus button right here. If we hover over it, it actually says add new brand. So we're going to go ahead and click that. That's going to take us to this pop-up window here where we can add a brand. So we, go, we can give it a name. We can also upload our own image. This is something I learned that you could do in C Sharp. Open the file dialog and we can go and search for an image here. So let's say I, ha I have a couple of caps myself, a couple beer caps. So let's say we were, we wanted to create a brand uh, profile for a Corona Light. I would select this image here, and then it'll tell me that the file has been uploaded to this app, and it'll check the existing image dropdown. And that uh, that that image we chose is actually being copied to this directory right here. So as you can see, Corona Light is in here now, as well as the other brands we've created. So for the brand name, I'll just type in a uh, Corona Light. And in my drop down here, if you saw that that message, that message box that popped up when we uploaded the image, it'll say check this drop down here. So if I click that, there's my Corona Light image. And then finally, I can set the primary color and secondary color. So this looks about gold and the blue looks like a really dark blue. So that's my primary secondary colors right there. And that could be anything really. And of course, like before, uh, this form also checks to see if everything here is valid, which everything is. We have a color that has no um, transparency at all. All the colors must be fully opaque. 
we do have a brand name, and we do have an image selected in our Choose Existing Image dropdown. So we're gonna go ahead and create the brand, and it'll give us this message box here. So it's gonna say, hey, check this brand dropdown in the Add Cap window, which we have open. So we're gonna hit OK, and that form will close. And once we come back here, we come over here, Corona Light is now populated in our brand dropdown. So we're gonna go ahead and select that. And I'm gonna say we got this one in mint condition about uh, a couple months ago uh, on the 23rd. And this time we will give it a cap message. So we'll go, hello, I'm a new cap. And the other cap message, I've seen messages in like the underside of the cap, so that's what this is. So this can't, this could even be something like uh, like a cool little fact, like I know some beer caps will put like little facts in here, like, uh, did you know otters swim? Right, that's, well, let's pretend that's what our cap says. And so we'll hit create cap. And like before, we have our second cap with all of the properties we just entered in there, including our brand colors there. I'm gonna add one more cap here. Just uh, like a Goose Island cap here with a used condition. Let's go uh, the fifth, and we'll just type in some, some random gobbledygook in the under cap message. So we'll hit create again, and there we go. And the reason why I added a third cap here is I wanted to show the remove cap functionality, and as well as just the body here in general, because for this uh, form, we can sort each of these columns based on specific criteria. So let's say we sort by primary color here, and uh, it seems the Goose Island cap is the one that's being presented up top. Let's say we didn't have or want this American Barley cap here anymore. We can actually select this cap and hit Remove Selected Cap. And by this way, by the way, this button will check if a cap is selected. So obviously American Barley is selected, so we'll just hit Remove Selected Cap and the application will ask us if we want to do that. Specifically through its ID number, we wanna say yes. So we're gonna hit yes, and then it'll do that for us. And you'll notice the IDs actually uh, uh, updated as that happened. So American Barley used to be number one, now it's not. So we remove that. So instead number two becomes number one, which was the Corona Light cap. So our information is being updated dynamically as we add and remove caps, which is great. Finally, let's say Nicole didn't want to use this app anymore for whatever reason, and she wanted all of her information kind of purged from the app. She can do that. And that's with this third button here, the delete user profile. So let's go ahead and click that. And of course, the app is going to ask us if it's going to delete that, um, that profile. We're going to say yes. And let's go, it goes, okay, this user has been removed from the application. And once we click okay on that, um, on that message box, we're gonna be taken back here. And if we try and look for Nicole in the pick a user dropdown, we're gonna see Nicole's not there anymore. We have Betsy and William and we can select them and see their profiles, but Nicole no longer exists. So that's, that's the application as a whole. So I thought that this application was really fun to make in general. I did want to go over a couple more things before I wrap up here. Mainly I wanted to show the how everything was being saved in the background. All of these saved files are being saved through uh, this utility files folder. And if we look into that, we have a couple things here. We can see our users and their information are being stored in a, uh, a comma a comma separated values file or a CSV file. So we can see William Betsy, they're both right here. We can even see that the sort order that we had them in is being being stored here as well. Although of course we can probably store things if uh, if I had functionality to Excel as well. Or I mean sort things, not store things. Our brand models are also stored here. So you can see Goose Island, American Barley, that's all here as well. For Betsy, she has her own file with the own her own like cap collection stored here. 
can see that for the brand, which is the second column here, only the ID is stored here, and then the application will take that ID and parse it into an actual brand. This is the quality right here, our under cap messages, our date acquisitions. You can see that up here, I know it says a bunch of number signs here, but up here you can see it says 6, 10, 20. So those are our date acquisitions. And that's all just kind of being stored here. So every user has their own storage file. I thought that would be the best way to go about it. Of course, if there were several, several, several other users, then these these files and their storage capacity would probably stack up pretty quickly. So that if that if it were ever to come to that, that then I would probably change how the application saves information and stores things. But for right now, I like what this is and how this is thus far. So overall, as I was saying before uh, I went into that, I really did enjoy working on this application. I wish I had finished it sooner, but unfortunately because of my job in real life, I had to work on it at nights about two or three hours at a time. So it took a couple weeks, which I think is a little unfortunate because I think as a whole, I could have gotten done gotten this done a lot sooner, but I did really enjoy working with the WPF forums, the open file dialogue, the MVBM stuff. I really like working on this UI application overall, especially how to like sort things and and logging things and stuff like that. Because for, for me that really appeals to me, especially since I have my own uh beer cap application. I'm just gonna go ahead and Shake that, that's my Gear cap application right there in a little plastic baggie. But I chose something that would appeal to me and that I thought would appeal to others too because I know other people also like to collect beer caps or things like that. So it just goes to show that I can create this kind of logging software and whether it be beer caps, dice, um, stamps, anything like that, I can make custom software for that and it can appeal to those people while also uh, being presented in a very uh, specialized but yet um, professional way. That's what that's the word I was looking for, professional. So I, I do think this is a professional app, and I do think I learned a lot from it. My greatest struggles were kind of learning how to do things like the open file dialogue as well as working with Calibre and Micro and WPF in sync with each other. I dived a lot into certain documentations and online tutorials in order to figure out how certain things were supposed to work out. But overall, everything turned out really well. The hardest struggle I would say I had for this project was definitely the open file dialog. That's the thing where if I hit the upload new file, uh, that's, that's that window right there. And to kind of figure that out, I actually created my own project separate from BeerCap Logger. I'm just figuring out how that all works. You can see here, if I go into main window and I view the code for that, you can see I'm trying to figure out how this works. And I even left comments for myself on what each of these things do. So I made sure to document things. And if you look in the code and if you look in the variables and the, and the functions I made, I left code comments as well saying how this works and what, what parameter does what and things like that. So I made sure that this document, this application has also been well documented. So that's my beer cap logger software overall. I hope you like it and I hope you found something interesting and useful here. And I hope you are as interested in it as I am, because I really did have a lot of fun working on, working on it. So thank you very much. I've been Dalton Nelson, and I hope you have a great new year.